Hi, welcome to another video. So this rat's nest here, this is my finished WPC, so uh, wireless power transfer and Qi, which is spelt Q-I, I don't know why they pronounce it Qi. So WPC and Qi compliant wireless transmitter. You might have seen the early videos I was messing about with our FET driver, high and low, low side FETs, driving current into a coil. Well, what I've done, added a Texas Instruments BQ500210 wireless power transmitter manager. Let's see if I can get you zoomed in. Right, so that's the BQ500210 Qi compliant wireless power transmitter manager. It's a 48 pin uh, QFN, so quad flat, no lead. That's the regular high side, low side FET driver. That's the current sense amplifier, since it's current through the whole coil, the whole circuit. And finally we have the communication device. This board looks after the communication, just two diodes, a couple of resistors, a couple of capacitors coming off the coil. These are the two caps that drive that coil. Right, this is obviously the transmitter coil, as used in the other videos. This is a piece of 3mm acrylic. Uh, I think the WPC uh, and GE compliance is meant to be 3.1mm, something like that. Right, this is the receiver chip. Uh, again, GE compliant. Uh, and you might remember from my other videos, this company, hopefully you'll be able to read that writing on the video, uh, I instructed this company in Canada to purchase one of these chips. They soldered it to the board for me and sent it to me. It cost a couple of dollars for the chip, seven or eight dollars or something for the board, and a few dollars shipping. Uh, incidentally, this isn't actually the chip they fitted. Uh, I blew it up during experiment and uh, I soldered this one on myself with some regular solder paste. I had nothing to lose by trying it and I've blown the other one up so if you want some set small surface mount devices and no lead packages soldered or want some special prototyping boards go to these people at protoadvantage.com and Canada offer a really good service so that's the receiver chip a few capacitors, a couple of resistors on the back uh, and these are the parallel resonance capacitors and a regular coil I've got that receiver attached to just microchips lithium ion battery charger just for a load so hopefully that will make sense right, look, I'll put this on there right put the receiver on the transmitter it's meant to have this receiver oh, this receiver is meant to sit inside another case so we use my phone adapter we use my phone case if I turn on the power hopefully you heard that beep it means it's transmitting turn it on you get power straight away right this case isn't very flat so it's picking up, I've got foreign object or the two devices aren't correctly aligned which is why this is flashing if I had a flat piece of plastic it might work so if I turn this light off you can actually see it's flicking between the green light which is says it's sending power and this other LED that flashes, the brighter one, is a foreign object detection to make it WPC compliant. But what I'll do, take this out of this case because it's not set up for it. Stick that on there. You see we've got wireless power, the beep indicates it's transmitting power, that light flashing to say it's okay. 
and we've got the LEDs on the lithium iron battery charger to say that battery is charging. So the purpose of this video, apart from show you my finished project, was I wanted to know how does the receiver communicate with the transmitter and how does the transmitter communicate with the receiver. How they communicate with each other well, the transmitter doesn't talk to the receiver, the receiver just talks to the transmitter. And on the back of here, there's two 22 nanofarad capacitors, and this receiver chip uh, switches those capacitors in a couple of thousand times a second, something like that, and you get sort of serial communication via the coil uh, back to the transmitter. Uh, what that does, it's switching the capacitors in, and obviously changing the inductance and the values within this coil and I'll show you the receiver signal uh, you effectively get it's sort of like you are just a string of ones and zeros so let me show you the scope right so what we're looking at here is the transmitter coil this is the voltage in and out of those capacitors sort of like a sine wave at the moment we're sort of low power 191 kilohertz that can go up to about 210 down to 115 120 kilohertz when we need more power and you'll see it's flashing up and down so if i increase or change this now hopefully you'll be able to see on there Maybe I can try and capture it. It's these lines here, sort of ones and noughts. So if I try and capture that. Right, what we've got here on the scope is communicating like UART via that coil with the capacitors being switched in and out. And we've got these, I think, I think these are zeros and these are ones. And what happens, the transmitter sends a preamble first, just to align the receiver, or transmitter, sorry. Uh, then header, and then the information about how much power it requires and whether the transmitter should increase the frequency or not. Uh, and you get a checksum at the end. This is only part of the capture, but... They call this backscatter, so obviously the capacitors are being switched in and out of the receiver coil. That's changing the waveform on a primary coil, and we get this communication. So, I'll find it again. Let's see if we make it bigger. So hopefully you can see that looks okay from where I'm standing but so that's the communication the receiver talking to the transmitter and the transmitter is then regulating the frequency to the FETs and obviously the current to the coil so that's how the power management is controlled uh, as I say they call it yeah, backscatter Right, you'll see the lithium-ion battery charge is actually finished. The uh, other LED's gone off, the red one's come on, so this indicates the lithium-ion battery's finished charging. So this circuit, regrettably, only deals with 5-volt loads. I, I guess I could get one of the uh, boost circuits, you know, like, like the uh, buck and boost. I could get a, a boost circuit to increase the voltage from, say, 5 to 9 volts. Uh, to, charge something like a 9 volt um, NICAD inside meters or something like that but I guess this circuit's too big to squeeze into a mobile phone but if you've got some other devices uh, that require 5 volts or less this is pretty handy but I, I just wanted to get the circuit going Texas Instruments with these ICs they give you the full circuit description and what components you need to get them running I was already messing about with wireless power here, so I thought I'll try the transmitter, 
a couple of additional circuits and the receiver and that's it. it this receiver is only going to stay running all the time it's talking to the tr transmitter once you take this off the transmitter isn't communicating anymore it doesn't see anything and it shuts down it sends a pulse every few seconds five seconds or so and looks for a device uh, and then turns back on so if I leave that there depending on the gap here I've been messing about it seems slow to respond sometimes but just then it's come on quite quickly uh, but if I turn the power off at the power supply and then back on it fires up straight away take it off put it back on it takes up to about 15 seconds sometimes for some reason there we go let's turn, turn back on I haven't put a resistor across the buzzer so maybe you need to discharge something inside the IC for the buzzer to go every time well this um, WPC compliance is meant to have foreign or metal object detection so that obviously detects higher current flowing through the current sense circuit uh, the, the transmitters or the receivers obviously talking to the transmitter and it knows there's excessive current going somewhere obviously into this coin and the current on the power supply has gone up generally runs about four, uh, 140 milliamps total so if I get rid of that I don't know if you saw that light that extra LED flashing there we go so that's the foreign object detection which also comes on if the th things aren't missile uh, if sorry it that also comes on if the two devices aren't aligned correctly or they're misaligned so that's it, that's the basic Qi compliant and WPC compliant wireless charging circuit as I say WPC you know, wireless power consortium right so that's the receiver BQ51013A uh, as I say I've got the company in Canada fit the IC to the board for me I subsequently blew it up and had to fit another anyway if you're into wireless power or want to know how devices like that communicate with one another uh, now you know uh, if look at the Texas Instruments data sheets it explains it all to you uh, and the principles of backscatter communication so hopefully this video has been helpful, thank you very much.